volunteering section. I like you guys. Hey folks, my name's Dana. I'm gonna be your tour guide and your monster truck driver, so you have to be nice to me because your lives are in my hands. <laughs> and gentlemen, how nervous are y'all that a chick's driving the oh, monster Oh, very, very nervous. Ladies, back me up, Cooper! <laughs> Cogburn Ostrich Ranch. This is a family owned and operated working ranch. There's actually three generations. We all live right here on the ranch and we've been raising ostriches since about 1987. But we were still back in Oklahoma. And as we started getting bigger in the business, we decided we either had to get out of ostriches or we had to get out of Oklahoma. So we let it up, came to sunny Arizona, and this is very much the natural climate for the ostriches. They like the hot, dry, arid climate. They're actually native to Africa. And in South Africa, they've been raising ostriches commercially for almost 200 years. There's three main products, the meat, the hide, also the feathers. The meat is a red meat. It looks like beef, it tastes like beef but it's lower in fat and cholesterol than turkey or chicken. For instance, 100 grams of raw meat, beef has 15.9 grams of fat, ostrich has one. It's so really, really healthy stuff. Has, uh, has anyone had ostrich meat before? No. Oh, burgers, steaks, maybe had some Bur no. Had the jerky. Had the jerky. That works right there. That's it. No one else. Burgers taste very much like a regular burger. But if you ever get a good steak that's cooked properly, one of the best steaks you'll ever eat in your life. Really tender, takes on seasonings and flavorings really well. So, you guys that are in Tucson, Jonathan's Cork. They know how Jonathan to cook it. Jonathan's Cork. Salsa. So, good place to, good date night. So, mm -hmm. Now, the second, I tell you what guys, if there's a bird out, we'll just run over and we'll have a barbecue on the way. How's that? Yeah. <laughs> now, the second product is the hide. Most people recognize ostrich leather, so it has all these bumps on it. That's actually the mark the feather follicle leaves on there. We call that the quill pattern, simply where they were growing feathers. And notice on this side, there's not any. There you go. That's the smooth skin ostrich. Place this down along their side and under their wings where they don't grow feathers, and that's where that part comes from. And ostrich leather is one of the most expensive leathers in the world, and it's known for its softness, but also its durability. You just can't hardly wear the darn stuff out. It's really, really tough. <laughs> and then the third product is the feathers. And ostrich feathers are actually what the ostrich industry started on in the early 1800s. And they're good for lots of things, but very different than a bird feather. If you guys have seen a bird feather, you know how it looks like it's all one solid piece? It's because it has these little hooks or barbs and they lock those feathers together so they trap air under them so birds can fly. Ostrich feathers, they're not flying anywhere with these guys. It's like a bad hair day every day. They don't interlock at all. Makes it a really soft feather. Makes them great for dusting because all the wild hairs actually pick up and hold the dust. They use them in big car manufacturing facilities before they run cars through the first paint room. They run all through these huge rolls of ostrich dusters. That way there's no dust particles trapped under that first layer of paint. And then of course what little bit Las Vegas showgirls cover up. They often use ostrich feathers to do that with. So fess up who was the Vegas showgirl in the earlier year. I think it is this bearded guy right here. So, <laughs> anyway, they are great for costuming, decorations, all different kinds of things. Unfortunately, when it rains, ostriches do not repel water like most birds do. They go from being pretty goofy looking anyhow to the ugliest animal on the face of the planet. They go a wet cat with long legs and a long neck, and that pretty much describes a wet ostrich there, guys. Now, ostriches live to be up to 70 years old. They can be productive 35 to 40 years of that. The females are the grayer brown ones that you feed up at the front, and we call them hens. And then the males are black and white, and we call them roosters. And you do not get to see the roosters up at the front, but you will get to see them back here because we're coming up on our main breeder camps. And by the way, folks, that is not a junkyard. That is a redneck savings account. So. <laughs> Anyway, like I said, we're coming up on our main breeder camps. We're about two miles of these. They go all directions back through the desert. We keep our best breeders back here. It's a little bit more romantic. And we play nice soft music for them at night, guys. So. But we're going to come up here and hang out for just a little bit. And once we get stopped, you folks that are over on my side are going to have to stand up to see all the goodies.
Come here. Come here. Hey, my little two little girls. Come here. Come here. Short window. Y'all can stand right down there. Step on there. Oh, wow. You see the eggs? Yeah. Oh, they have eggs. Hey, Kelly. Oh, careful. Oh, you get up on the okay. Guys, that is a real ostrich egg nest. Those are real ostrich eggs. And you know what? That's even real ostriches out there, too. Okay? <laughs> now, here's what happens. You see their feet? They have that big toe on the front, little toe over on the side. That makes the ostrich the only two toed bird in the world because most oh, birds uh, have four toes. Oh. Now, the male, that black and white one there, his name's Pretty Boy Floyd. He oh, takes that boy. big front toenail claws that depression out in the sand, and then he tries to sweet talk the ladies into laying in his nest. Aww. Now when the girls start laying eggs, they'll lay an egg every other day during laying season, which here in Arizona is about January through July. Now in the wild, they'll still lay an egg every other day, but they'll lay a group or a bunch of eggs, which is about 15 eggs, give or take one or two. Then they'll stop laying, set on those eggs, incubate them, and hatch them. That way all the chicks will hatch out together, and they can raise them together as one big group or brood. Now with artificial incubation, what we do here, we just keep taking the eggs away from them all the time. The females think, oh no, the lions must have ate my eggs. I better lay some more. And that's mm. how we trick them into laying 60 to 80 eggs wow, a season. Wow, 60 to 80 eggs a season. Yeah, it can eat some food. Now, have you guys ever heard that an ostrich sticks its head in the sand? Ever heard that theory before? Uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. uh, what that is, that is not true. But now that you've seen an ostrich egg nest, this will make a whole lot more sense. Because here's what really happens. That female tends to those eggs. She does that by sticking her head down into that nest, taking her beak, and she'll scoot or roll those eggs around. Kind of looks like she's trying to roll them up underneath her chin. She does that to keep the embryo from sticking to the side of the shell. Keeps it a viable, hatchable mm. egg. We do the same thing with artificial incubation by rotating them mechanically in the incubators every four hours. In the wild, she simply rolls them around. So Master, if you're looking out across the desert, that hen has her head down in that depression. Looks like she's got her head stuck in the sand. It's really not. It's just stuck in an ostrich egg nest. Mm -hmm. So congratulations. You guys are officially <laughs> ostrich experts already for the day. There you go. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, if you guys will have a seat, I got some cool stuff to come around and share with you. That's cool, huh? Yeah, yeah.